Oh, hello, folks, and welcome back to the, um, <clears throat> welcome back to the Mo's Automotive Radio Show. Hello, everybody. I'm your humble host, Mike Mo, here at about, um, where am I? Um, here at about 11.18 on a Saturday night here for a gear change show, another one of these, um, I believe this is episode 513 and the 22nd of the year. So, um, amongst other videos, I think I have like 34 videos, I think. Something like that. I think I have 35 videos actually for the year, even though like 48 days, 48 days in. Um, hello everybody and welcome back to a, another one. I wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about uh, um, something automotive related and uh, something uh, that's been on my mind for a while and something I hadn't um, something I uh, forgot to kind of mention um, so what got me into cars actually you guys are probably wondering so we're going to talk about that today. Gear Change Show is not going to be about a topic. It's going to be about me. I think this is the first time I think I've ever talked about something about me. Um, or, well, actually, no, I've done Line Rock 2008. So that was my personal experience. Um, but I want to tell you guys what got me into cars and what got me into the, autom what got me into the automotive bug. Um, so... Um, So, uh, you know, I, so I, uh, started out with, um, so like any other guy, um, like any other kid my age, me born in the late eighties, early nineties, um, I always had an affinity for, um, for playing things with, on four wheels. So I had fire trucks, I had dump trucks, I had car, I had, uh, cat cars as a kid. Cat cars as a kid. If, if no one knows what those are, um, so a cat car. They still sell cat cars. I don't think. I didn't think they did. Um, they do sell cars like it. They do sell carts like it, but not. Um, but nothing really. Um, but nothing really cool though, and it's kind of and and they're kind of big money, so. Um, So these kind of, so I'll show you a photo of uh, a cat car. Cat cars are pretty, they're pretty cool. Um, so I'm just gonna show you guys a little. They were done by, uh, they were done by uh, Kettler, the Kettler Corporation in um, Germany. So this is what a cat car looked like. This kind of got me. If you guys look at it, it looks like a go-kart a little bit. It, it looks like a go-kart a little bit. It's got, um, you know, it's got a reel. It's got a seat. Uh, it's powered, as you guys can see, the little pedals. It's powered by pedals. You can't see it, but there's a uh, transmission little thing there. And then there's a handbrake where we could, where we could hold it. And Chuck and I used to do. Chuck, my, my brother Chuck and I used to do drag races with it. We'd drive it, see who would pedal down faster. Um, since I was lighter, I, I won, but sometimes Chuck would win because he'd pedal faster. 
or he tried to uh, push off with his feet or he tried to push off with his feet or um, or he tried to um, sit higher on the hill or something like that we have a small my dad's barn has a small little hill and we used to shoot down through that um, my introduction and I was into anything on full wheels I was into truck I see we had truck video we had truck videos we had we had truck videos we had um, and stuff like that we had vehicles we had uh, construction vehicle videos and stuff like that as kids you know um, but the cat cars were kind of my first introduction you know every since I'm a 90s kid I had a cozy coupe just like everybody else did you know the yellow you know the one with the yellow top the red doors looked like the Fred Flintstone car you guys remember those <laughs> um, you guys remember those those things you guys just look it up just look it up I don't, I don't know if they make cozy coops anymore old tanks cozy coop they still make them hilarious Yeah, you used to be able to, yeah, see that right there, you used to be able to sit in there, take the top off, fill that thing with water in the back. We had a nice, we had a gas pump, we had a pressure price gas pump and stuff like that. This was, this was kind of, kind of, kind of foreshadowing to what I'd really like, but uh, it wouldn't be until I, um, it wouldn't be until I got um, PlayStation, I think. And I got NASCAR 98. And my brother Chuck got driver the year after. That kind of sealed the deal for my thing. Well, on four wheels. I always used to, um, I always used to uh, just love stuff like that. And it was, and it was, and it kind of made, and I kind of formed, um, and over time when I played other racing games, I kind of, I think I kind of, my first car that I ever was a fan of um, was the Viper. I was a Dodge Viper fan back, when I was a, back, back in the late 90s or 2000s because that was the car that was really, that was, that was the car that was really winning a lot of stuff. Um, the Dodge Viper was kind of just a cool car. It would, it won races at Daytona, Sebring, Le Mans, Le, Le Mans over in France, the Nürburgring 24 hour, the Spa 24 hour. It was running all over the place, so um, it was also running over in Japan. So I was, so I got into that. Um, I got into that. I also kind of had a car that we used to play around in. Um, we used to have this um, Volkswagen. We used to have my dad's Volkswagen Bug from the nineteen that my dad had in the mid seventies. My dad couldn't afford very. My dad couldn't afford a lot. Uh, for a car, he, my dad couldn't pay like ten thousand million dollars for a car, so he bought. So he knew a guy that was selling a, a Volkswagen Bug, uh, an old '68 Volkswagen Bug for like two hundred dollars. My dad took it. My dad took it. Great car. Uh, drove my drove my my dad drove to him for work, school in that car. Drove my mom on a few dates in that car. My grandfather got used to. Hearing the exhaust since it was wide open, since it was wide open, technically, and there was a broken exhaust. And the only way you could get heat into the cabin was if you went over a puddle and you splashed a little water on the exhaust and actually created a little heat inside the inside the cabin. So, um, and uh, my dad loved it. It was a it was a baby blue one. Uh, I remember playing with the steering wheel. I remember turning the ignition, even though the engine. My dad didn't have the keys at the time. I remember pushing. On the, I remember pushing. I remember my brother Chuck pushing on the clutch and he shifting the gears and stuff like that. Even though, even though it was on, even though the um, car was on blocks back then, we were still ch changing the transmission. We opened up the 
we opened up the rear gate, uh, the rear uh, the rear engine cover. We saw the water cooled engine. It was such a cool thing. Um, <laughs> we love that car so much. We love that car so much. Actually, that was actually not the first car I actually ever was interested in. Forget about the Dodge Viper. I was actually interested in the in that VW Beetle, the VW body, the VW Beetle. I think it was a I think it was a eleven hundred or something like. I think it was like a, it was either an eleven hundred or thirteen hundred. My dad would remember um, way back. See, just drive the car a long time. Um, he um, he needed something else. Well, he had trucks back then, so um, we literally. We literally cried the day <laughs> we called it Herbie because we used to, we used to watch the Herbie movies when we were kids. We literally cried our eyes out. We literally cried. We literally cried our. Blah, blah. We literally cried our eyes out when that car left. And my mother was like, "Oh, it's going off to a better place. It's going off to car heaven." No, we didn't want it to go to car heaven. You know, yada yada yada. I was bawling my eyes. Oh my god! Oh my god! We don't leave. So it was my first, my first car that I was attached to. I, I, looking back on it, it was the first car I was ever attached onto. You know, um, it was a rust bucket. My, my dad, dad years later says, "Oh, you love the, you guys love to play in that car. You guys had so much fun. You guys used to play go around. It was, it was a great, it was a great thing." Um, I actually remember getting stung by a hornet in my, my first, my, my first hornet slash so bee in that car. By the way, right in the. Right in the center of the head. I never, ever, ever sat in that car ever again after that. I think that was, I think right after I got stunned, my dad ended up towing it because my dad was like, it's a death trap and I don't want to do it. My dad ended up clearing the nest out. My dad ended up, um, my dad ended up clearing the nest out um, before, uh, my dad ended up clearing the nest out. Um, I think we did play it one more time and then it got rolled off. So, yeah. So, my dad's looks like him, but got me all started in the cars because of my emotional reaction, you know. Um, then the Dodge Viper came along. And then in 2000 and... And then in 2004... Um, I, you know, I watched NASCAR. I, I liked... Uh, I like to look at Ford Mustangs and stuff like that, and I like to look at uh, Chevrolet Camaros. Actually, the first car I think I ever sat in, the first, first sports car I think I ever sat in was a Chevrolet Camaro. Actually, um, when I was a when I was a kid, my my dad went down to uh, Howard uh, Howard Chevrolet. It's now um, it's now a uh, I think it's now. Um, I think it's Goodwill or Goodwood Chevrolet or something like that. It's it's not around anymore, but it's around no more. But I remember my parents getting a Chevrolet from the dealership, and actually no, it was DeSantis. DeSantis gave us uh, was kind of my first, um, kind of my first one. We were I think we were yeah we were getting a. Uh, Was it the Buick? It was either a Buick or a. It was either Buick or the original Tahoe from like 1995. So I remember actually being in the dealership, and there was an Impala. And there was the Impala. There was the Monte Carlo, and I think I remember the Camaro. The guy, the the show, the guy in the showroom actually let my brother Chuck and I sit in the Camaro. So and it was actually very 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 cool. And then I think in 1996, um, no, was it 96, 97? I think it was 96, I think we got our 97. Was it 97? Actually, yeah, I think it was 1997. We actually ended up getting a, um, we ended up getting, going to the Santa Chevrolet and getting a truck. My dad got a, my dad got a truck, and I think right after that, my mother got a Tahoe. And I remember seeing my first Corvette. So I really liked the shape of the cars and stuff like that. I really liked it. 
really liked it. So, and um, I really never thought anything about Camaros because I never, because when I was a kid, I really never saw them race, really. Um, I always saw the Monte Carlo and the Lumina and the Ford Taurus, Ford Thunderbird and the Ford Taurus, the Pontiac Grand Am and the Dodge, um, Dodge Intrepid or the Dodge Stratus or whatever it was back then raced. So I really didn't know about what Camaro did. And I found out years later that the Camaro was an amazing race car. I still like Camaros to this day. My dad owns one. Um, but what really got me into, um, but what really got me into American cars was the day I think I just graduated. Um, I just graduated high school. I think it was a Sunday. I think it was a Saturday morning. I think it was like a Saturday afternoon. Then plopping on Speed Vision back in 2003, back what was now Speed Channel. I remember plopping on Speed Channel. And I remember um, seeing this um, seeing this yellow Corvette. And I remember watching it. And I remember shutting it off because I just thought it was just another race. I just thought it was another NASCAR race. And, and I kind of looked and I was like, this is not a NASCAR race. They're not going over in circles. I'm like, is this Suzuka? Is this Watkins Glen? I knew about Suzuka and Watkins Glen back then. So I knew about Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen has always been a favorite of mine anyway, which is, why, which is the reason why I like the track. Um, uh, 2000, and, but watching Corvette, and, uh, and then I remember on Sunday morning, watch after, I remember Sunday morning after, um, after church on Sunday, remember 10.30 or one, we, were, we just came back from church in June. It was hot as, it was hot as hell uh, back then. And I saw back then, I remember going in and I can remember, um, I can remember uh, watching the finish of the, and I saw that the Corvette won, and I think it was like halfway through the race, and they were like, oh, the Corvette's tell laps down. I'm like, oh, it's so cool. And then I started watching races after that, and I think I watched, um, I think I watched, uh, I didn't really watch too many races. I think I watched one at Sonoma, and then I think I watched one for briefly, at, and then I was reading a race car review, and... Um, I was big into the Corvettes. I was a really big Corvette guy, and I was telling my dad, I was like watching the watch it. I said, "Oh, why doesn't why doesn't Corvette win? Corvette's a race car. Corvette, the American car, the American car. The Corvette is the has a big engine, and I would look it up. The Corvette has a big engine. It should be more powerful than this Audi R8 LMP1. It's a cheater car. It's got all wheel drive. Yada yada yada. And um, <laughs> even back then, I kind of I kind of had the attitude that American things were better, so, um, but yeah, that, that kind of, and it kind of just grew from there. Uh, I remember what, I remember, um, watching the American Le Mans series. I've been watching the American Le Mans series since, since, I've been watching NASCAR since 1998, actually. Yeah, I think I've been watching it since 96, 97, 90, actually I've been watching it since I was six or seven years old, because I remember my grandfather, my dad's dad, actually showing me a race on, on his television down the Cape, and down the Cape one time, my, my grandfather always used to have the replays of all the NASCAR races, and stuff like that, and I remember being a big fan of uh, Dale Earnhardt, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., and stuff like that, I didn't know about Indy back then, um, not as much as I do know about it now, um, but I remember liking NASCAR modifieds and stuff like that. And and um, you know I remember uh, getting some terms wrong when we went to when we went to a ra racing show where we saw all these cars. I remember saying rear spoil, calling it rear spoil. Remember not really knowing how to say rear spoiler. Rear spoiler, I, wow, wow, 
how did I say it? Sport. How did I say it? Sport or uh, sport? E the sport? I over spoil a spoiler. Spoiler. I remember calling a spoiler, and my my grandpa was like, "It's called a spoiler." It's like it's called a spoiler, and I, he says, "Yeah, yeah." And I said, "It's a spoiler. It helps the car come." It helps the car to angle it so it can put the car down on the track so it won't fly in the so it won't fly in the air so, so they can go fast around the track. My grandfather was always good with uh, <laughs> always good with the sport of NASCAR because my dad grew up watching the modifieds. Uh, my dad actually grew up watching modified racing here at Seacock and Thompson and stuff like that when they were kids. Um, it was sort of a cheap thrill because I couldn't go to any big NASCAR races, but my dad was so grateful to go to those races. Um, in fact, a friend of my grandfather's, Dan Reserve, he actually ran Pro Modified Forest down in Chatham, and then he also ran around uh, the uh, New England area. And uh, Dan Reserve, I don't know if he's still alive, Dan Sr., his, his kid Jr. also races Pro Four Modifieds. Um, Dan Senior actually, I actually got to see Dan Senior actually get inducted to, into the um, New England Motorsports Hall of Fame. Got to see some great stuff. I uh, got to listen to, to uh, Jack Root and a bunch of other guys. And uh, Jack Root, I remember, had an emotional thing about, um, um, I think uh, there was a bunch of uh, Italian brothers. I think it was either the Lozano or the Rollins or brothers or something like that. And, um, and they were, and he got Terry. I don't remember that. Um, I've also got the chance to, I think my first race car, I think my first time ever going to a racetrack was, um, what was my first time going to a racetrack? Um, I think my first time ever going on a racetrack was um, actually first time going on a racetrack was actually um, uh, yeah Lime Rock in two thousand and seven and then I've been to a different I've been to Loudon I've been to uh, Watkins Glen been to Seekonk um, and I've been to um, I almost went to Las Vegas, Las Vegas Speedway, but um, I've also seen some tracks from afar. I've also seen some tracks from afar. In fact, I've been on the ground. There's some uh, former tracks that were around here that that I probably was walking around as and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little history of you know how I got the cars and why I'm into them. Um, and I think it had something to do with my grandfather. God, God bless his soul. Uh, we lost him um, about a year and a half. Ago. We lost him about two, a year and a half ago in December. So um, actually, no, we lost him about a year. Yeah, so we lost him. It's February right now. So we lost him about a year ago. So we lost him about a year ago and two months. About a year and two months ago. So, um, so yeah, it's. I got the bug from him. Um, I always have a big thing for Ferraris, Corvettes, Aston Martins, Porsches, and stuff like that. Um, I've had a chance to ride in a couple of Corvette, a Corvette, a Porsche, a Camaro. Um, I've had a chance to ride in. Um, I haven't had a chance to ride in a Mustang. I got a chance to sit in a Mustang. I think my, one of the guys that my dad knew who did uh, planning, and I remember walking around his, I remember my dad had a guy come in, he was doing some work, and he had an SBT Cobra Mustang convertible, it had a big supercharger on it, and and it had a chip on it, and it uh, had, had an exhaust and stuff like that. It made around 500, it made around 550 horsepower, or something like that. And I just couldn't stop looking at this vehicle all the time. So one of the days, so I think my dad, my dad had the guy come around, and uh, the guy came around again, and I asked him. I said, hey, when they were done, I asked him. I said, hey, can can I said, hey, can I? I'm, I'm interested in the Mustang. It's such a cool car. 
in the start of up, and it sounded so glorious. That SBT, that 4.6 liter, that 4. Point, um, that 4.5 liter, 390 horse, the 4.5, 5.4 liter, 390 horse, or 550 horses in, in this one. It sounded that four, that 5.4 super charity. It sounds so cool, and I, and I just can, I can just hear the car idling, idling again. It's so, it's just amazing. So, um, so yeah, it was a Volkswagen bug that. Uh, got me interested in cars, and then it was, um, and I've been a fan of uh, Corvettes and Camaros, and uh, I also like Thunderbirds a little bit. Um, for exotics, you know, um, what got me into exotics was um, was actually James Bond, actually, because the DB5, the Lotus Esprit, uh, the, the BMW Z8, and stuff like that, and the BMW uh, 750. I remember watching all the James Bond movies. Uh, that got me into Ferraris and Porsches and stuff like that. Um, I've actually had the chance to, um, and I've um, I haven't been into too many Japanese cars. I mean, I've been in a couple of Hondas and I've been in a couple of uh, Infinities and stuff like that. A couple of Audis, maybe a couple of Mercedes when I Uber it. Uh, and there's something just really cool about being in a car like that and you know I'm I just want to let you know that I'm I'm not super big on this whole EV thing at the moment so um, I think the infrastructure is too forced and stuff like that um, but I'm getting the chance to do this when they don't have those restrictions so yeah, thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a personal history of mine and, uh, you know, how I got into cars and the reason why I'm so car crazy and the reason why I am um, going to do this because I think this is a good, I think it was a good idea for me to do this and for me to review why I really wanted to start this channel and, well, why I wanted to, why I want to continue this channel and the reason and the way I want to um, keep going with it because I needed a breath of fresh air. So, and I feel talking about your uh, own experience, your own self kind of gives you um, that life form, that uh, real spark to, to do it. So, um, it is currently the 18th, it's currently the 17th. From here till leap day, I'm going to try to put out as many videos as I can. Um, even if I have to put up multiples a day during the month, um, I really have been kind of being dismissive of this month, even though I've been focusing on other projects and stuff like that. And I know I have 22 of these and we have 22 of these and for the year and we're 48 days in stuff like that. So so yeah, um, I guess I didn't want to kick it into a non. I guess I didn't want to kick kick it into high gear. I think um, March might be might be that sort of thing. So I'm hoping to um, do so. So I'm gonna record one tonight. This one tomorrow, which is gonna be the 23rd, the 24th Monday. I'm not gonna skip Tuesday. I'm gonna skip Tuesday. 25th is gonna be Wednesday. I'm gonna pinch myself to do these because I wanna, because I think I finally figured it out. Tomorrow, I think I'm gonna give you guys, um, gonna give you guys an update on what I think about certain cars right now. And um, um, actually, I actually have to talk about something stupid absurd tomorrow. I'm gonna talk about Gran Turismo's absurd 4,000. 600 or 5,000 if you want to call it DLC that nobody asked for I'm going to talk to you guys about the Bulgavari or the Bulgavari or whatever the Valari or the it should be called the the vulgar the vulgar because it's just a vulgar thing to do to ask 5,000 ask somebody to pay $5,000 just to get a code so they can experience a car that's kind of useless um 
seriously, it has, seriously, I'll, seriously, I will, seriously, when it launches in March, or whenever Gran Turismo wants to update the game, I will show you guys, I will put the microphone on, and I will show you guys why it's not, why, why you should just wait, why the people who just paid $5,000 should just wait, because I'm just going to say, the VGT car probably won't be all that, all that much, and I'll, um, I'll see, I'll see what it is. It could be exciting, could be good. The Genesis VGT car was kind of cool. Um, I did some video with that. Um, I'm never going to buy that ever again, and I'm just going to sit there and tell you guys that, um, but I'll just show you how absurd it is, and I'll tell you what I think about all these absurd prices that that you have to pay for just to get all this DLC and just DLC in general I'm gonna say so uh, plus I'm gonna tell you um, that I got um, a set of course of competency one for for Xbox and I had fun with it today so uh, so this has been a uh, look at why I got into cars and why I have a passion for them why I like talking and chatter and chatterboxing about them so you guys learned something about me today and I've just revitalized myself and tomorrow I'm going to go into the next topic with full energy because I need to talk about absurd um, absurd things that uh, why, per, why, why purchasing an absurd thing an absurd thing that you're just going to wear and you're going to put in a time you're going to put in a collection box or a or a, or a um, jewelry box and you never touch it or again Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the most absurd, most, most absurd gaming DLC ever, ever. We're going to, the Bulgavari watch, VGT car, that makes you purchase watch for nearly $5,000. And I'm going to tell you what I think about that.